Hello everybody, Janet Becker's here and we have got a very exciting guest today, Bob Clark Dammit. I've been told I have to say the Dammit at the end of your name. G'day yes. Bob. Good, good day, Janet. How are you doing? I am terrific. Now, I asked Bob to come along because he has a really unique way of podcasting and I had been a guest on Bob's podcast and I absolutely loved the format that you're using Bob and I could just really see how this could be a fantastic option for people who are listening here who've been thinking about getting into podcasting but the whole um, you know because it is a lot of work you know the whole yeah. amount of work and the interviewing and all of that sort of stuff may have felt as if it was just too much to do so your system is it's different it's quite unique I haven't seen anybody else do it so that's why I've invited Bob along today, everybody. Is it's a, a, just his beautiful, unique way of running a podcast. So get ready to take notes if you've been thinking about what is a great way for you to be able to get your message out there in a bigger way without you know doing it the same as everybody else. You'll get you're in for a treat today. So great to welcome you, Bob. Now, um, Thank you, Janet. In brief, before we kind of get stuck into really diving into the whole podcasting techniques, is let's just do a little bit of your story. So, and the best way I find to do that is like, if you can just share like, who is it that you help and how do you do that? Okay. So everyone, my name is Bob Clark Dammit. I add the Dammit on there because there's too many Bob Clarks in the world. Right. And I also just part of my personality there. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, the people I help are business owners in the B2B space, real estate agents, commercial insurance, and financial planners. Right. And the I, yes. And basically what I show them how to do is how to get basically five to 20 one-on-ones every single week with potential prospects, referral partners, and joint venture partners. Very easy. Right. Brilliant. So that's, I love how incredibly specific you are. So really what we're going to be looking at is those one-on-one -on -one conversations and the, 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 the industries that you've talked about are very much ones where people have a conversation, don't they? They don't just go and buy online. They have a Yeah, a lot of those on there, there. I mean, you do have the online, you know, the online entrepreneur who all they do is sell classes. But an interesting story, and I kind of realized this just recently, is I'll go to local networking events just to basically get out of the house. Right. And I noticed that there that every single person who wanted to talk to me wanted to have coffee. You know, right. let's, let's schedule a coffee there. So coffee requires 15 minute drive. You know, on that, let's, let's average to the 15 minutes. Depends on where you are. You know, that yeah. part there. Then you're going to want to spend an hour with the person. You know, you talk for 30 minutes, they talk for 30 minutes and then there's 15 minutes back. Yeah. So now we're looking at an hour and a half commitment plus five to $10 for a coffee. You know, that part there. So yeah. And so what I realize is that that takes a lot of time. Mm. And also if someone doesn't show, you know, because your know, life happens there, you're frustrated because you have this huge block of your day taken up there. Mm. Then you've got the other extreme, the online marketers, that all they do is they talk to the online social media void and send out instant messages. Right. You know, that, that part there. So I basically, my team and I, we built a system that marries the two very, very well. And we just happen to use a podcast as a system for that. Right. Okay. So, and I love how you've just talked about those two extremes because <laughs> I've been that person at both those extremes as well, because I'll tell you what, you learn pretty quickly. This whole idea, can I meet you for coffee really means, can I get free consulting and pick your brain? Um, or can I sell you? Yes. Or can I sell you something that you're really not necessarily interested in? And so it's actually a really uncomfortable conversation to have because nobody's really being honest right from the very beginning. You're, you're I'll, I'll always remember there was this guy who was a financial planner. Yep. And he kept wanting to meet me for coffee. And finally, I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet you. But just to let you know right now, I am a no for you as a client. I have other plans. You know, you're, you're not going to, I'm not going to hire you. But if you're still wanting to meet for coffee, great. And as soon as we meet, he asks me what I do. Then he pulls out his book of numbers and everything. And so now, again, I, I had to be a little bit of a jerk and say, what did I tell you beforehand? So that whole thing there. Now, the beautiful thing, so basically, here, here's what I'm teaching people how to do. You're inviting people on a very short podcast, and the questions are the same every single time. So starting conversations faster. Janet, I got you on a one-on-one -on -one call with me very quickly. 
Yeah. Because I said, I have a podcast. It's six questions in eight minutes and eight seconds because it looks like Bob. Ha ha ha. That's so funny. And that got you on my podcast very quickly. Yeah. And then and I'm like, here's a shocker, Janet. Here's a re reason I asked you to be on my podcast. You are a potential prospect, referral partner, or joint venture partner. Right. Let's just be, let's just be honest here. Let's not, let's not play this game of, oh, I just want to get to know you as a person. No, it was, those are the re three reasons there. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly, um, so I'll, we might just step back a little bit because I love that you've just said it right clearly. There's, okay, there's three things that you want to be doing, you know, that you're hoping when that person that you're going to be interviewing them, you know, that's, that's what you're intending. So I love this whole thing of you're actually being incredibly open and honest in approaching this as a strategy. Because as we talked about, you know, the meet me for coffee is usually involving you know, it's uncomfortable because people are always going, well, what is it that I want? What do you want? Whereas with podcasting, it is already like a business transaction because you're not right. saying, you're not having a private conversation. You are having a public conversation. And so it is obviously that this is about business. So what I might do is we might dive into a little bit about any kind of podcasting. What are those benefits? And we might look at those three things that you've talked about that comes from right. a podcast that anybody who you're interviewing that this is what you're this is what you have as the potential and we'll talk about how each of those ones i can talk about from the other side the discussions that i had with you um and which of those i actually fit it into which if we if you hadn't interviewed me on the podcast if we hadn't had the conversation is very unlikely to have happened so we can talk about that and how that actually works so that then we also, can talk about interesting it. thing I, I want you that want to talk about that there is the goal is basically i do it in 30 minutes the whole podcast takes 15 minutes to do you know pre-production yeah. post-production that part there and then it's we're just having a conversation i didn't start like for basically the podcast coaching i'm doing i didn't go as soon as it was over okay janet so now you should hire me as a coach and here much here's how much it is yeah we had a conversation i asked you about your business you asked me about mine through that conversation like mm, maybe some things can happen there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that's, so what we might do to be able to make this so that people can implement, this is the structure that I recommend that we're gonna follow now. So everybody get ready to take your notes. Let's that take will, notes. Yep, so we, we're gonna, first of all, we'll talk about the difference between the two podcasts that we are doing now. Right. I'm doing a longer, more in-depth podcast. Your mm -hmm. podcast technique will go into what does that look like. Then we're gonna have a look at, okay, pros and cons of both types and then looking at those three different ways that the people who you're interviewing how do they fit you know how can you actually through either of these methods get those um you know get those outcomes and then we'll have a look for everybody here that's listening what things that you need to be thinking about to decide what's going to be the best for you what's the best method so here we are we're going to have a little bit of a you know a comparison between Bob's I love it. of, you know, six questions in eight minutes because eight is 808, which is like, Bob, see, I'm, I'm already saying your tagline. Yeah, that's, that's part of it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in eight minutes, you may take slightly longer. doesn't really matter. In your calendar, that's only about a 15-minute slot that you need mm -hmm. um, compared to what I do, which is I alternate. So we're doing an interview here. This may go for anywhere between 20 minutes and 50 minutes, depending on how deep right. we go. Um, and then the, the other weeks, I do a masterclass, which is just me. And that will normally go for 20 minutes, sometimes 30. Mm -hmm. So they're the two different techniques. Now, the other thing that we might look at, Bob, with yours is where it, yours is only on Facebook, isn't it? Do you? No, it's a, it is actually on there? iTunes, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Oh, it is. There you go. Yes. Okay. So, so one, here's a little trick for everyone is here's the thing. Anyone, if you're, if you, if your clients are on LinkedIn, like, you know, majority of our, you really need to listen to this. You want to make sure if you're going to do a podcast, it's under nine minutes and 59 seconds, period. The reason right. being is now you can post it as a video on LinkedIn. Once it's 10 minutes and one second, can't go on LinkedIn. Now you have to go send someone off LinkedIn. LinkedIn doesn't like you sending people off their site, so they're going to take juice away from your post. Excellent. Oh, that is a great tip. There you go. I didn't realize that they had that 10-minute limit. So 
that is a huge advantage when it comes to being able to do the LinkedIn because you're not just going to be doing a link and saying, go over to here. You're right. actually putting the video onto LinkedIn. And we Absolutely. Every been- single time I post a podcast, it goes straight onto LinkedIn itself. I don't send people to Podbean or anything like that. That is brilliant. That's a great tip. And it's also um, because we've been experimenting. I have a a second podcast that I do that at the moment we haven't syndicated elsewhere. Um, And it's only a few minutes. I just send it out on Saturday mornings and it's motivation from Janet. And we put that straight over onto LinkedIn. And we've just been measuring, you know, what kind of engagement you can get from LinkedIn with those shorter videos as opposed to it going on to other ones. And it's actually been really quite... um, it's been really quite, you know, noticeable. You know, so it's something that we're going to be experimenting a lot more because it's, right. I guess, because not as many people are doing it, are they? Not as many people are using video onto the LinkedIn platform. Yeah, video is a lot rarer on LinkedIn. And the, the problem is on LinkedIn right now is LinkedIn, I would say, is probably at least five, five to three years behind Facebook when it comes out, people are market on there. Yeah. You sell people on LinkedIn, all they're posting on their posts is why you should hire me and hear some industry news. Yeah, it's a very different, very different platform. So, right. um, so I, I love this. So that's that's okay. So if we're going to be looking at Bob's method of you know under ten minutes, and we've got the other method of the longer podcasting, picking score one there for the for the Bob method yes. <laughs> because it allows you to just put the whole video over there onto um, LinkedIn. Awesome. Yes, love it. Well, I got a point. I'm winning so far. One point to right, Game's over. Game's over. We're done. I win. <laughs> okay. So, you've, so you, you're doing exactly the same things that I do through this podcast is that you're syndicating right. it every single way that you can. Okay. Now, the other thing with your podcast is um, it is all video. A lot of times when people do podcasts, they don't do video at all. They'll just use the audio. Um, as you as people can see, if you're here on either YouTube or the website, you will see that I video this, but I also just put the audio over into over like the into iTunes podcast. and everything there. And I will tell everyone right now, yep. doing a podcast as video is insanely important because now you got content for Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Yeah. And for people who are listening to this on iTunes, first off, Janet's background is way better than mine. <laughs> My background, and you got here, my background is two fake trees and a wall that I haven't painted and has a couple dents in it. Hey, but the it's, idea a nice being color. It, it's a nice color. It coordinates it my background, which, you know, as an artist, that really, that just it makes my little artist happy, my little artist heart happy. Yeah. Yes. And well, the reason I do this is to prove to everyone you don't need a fancy background to do this. I've no. done over 400 episodes with this background. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely true. People overcomplicate it. So that is a really good point. I, I totally agree with you. If you can be using video, it makes such a huge difference because you can get that connection. Now, the thing with the longer um, episodes, and so this is another point when it comes to the repurposing of the video, is with the longer video, we don't put these whole episodes over, we don't post them onto the social media platforms because they're too long. Right. But the shorter ones that I do, which are normally three to five minutes, absolutely, that's what we do. Um, so, yeah, there you go. King, another one there for for Bob who's vaping away. I have never had I, anybody. I totally do that during the podcast. I'm totally okay <laughs> with vaping on the podcast. So th- and actually, this is... Um, something else that comes with your shorter um, episodes. Now, when I do the shorter episodes, and it's something that I've helped my clients do for years, doing the short right. sort of me TV method, it's always just you to camera sharing right. something because it's it's short. But what you've done is yours are all interviews, so yep. they're short, but they're interviews. So this is a very very different way of running a podcast of doing an interview. So let's dive in a little bit into how do you make that work? Because it can be very, very difficult to rein people in if they've got something that they want to talk about in depth. So kind of, kind of like what I tell people there is, there is a time limit. And this is what I train all my clients on for everyone else who isn't me, because I'm able to be witty and make a different question every single time for the sixth question. I tell my clients, make them all the same, especially when you're starting out. Right. And I'll tell you guys the six questions basically in a broad term of there. So yeah. 
first question is, who are, who are you and what do you do? Is a question, you know, ask that in your, per, your voice. Don't do exactly the same thing there. Yeah. Makes it easy because if someone has a really complicated name, I have them introduce themselves. Yeah. So I'm not butchering it. So that's it there. And I tell them the first four questions are all about 30 seconds a piece. If they go ridiculously long, I'll say something like Janet with seven minutes left. Question number two. Yeah. Doesn't happen very r- rarely do people go over. Believe it or not, when you have this style there, I have more people that go a little too short. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So question number one is basically, who are you and what do you do? Question number two is a question built to make them feel great about their business. Okay. So example for me is I say, what do your clients say about you that make you unique? Yeah, that was a good question. That was a good question. Yeah. I really had to think about that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was good. And question. I love that your concept there is it's to make them feel good. Yes, it's all about, it's, everything is all about making the guests feel, feel good. Great. You know, that part there. Question number three is a question, basically it's a, lead, it's a lead gen question. So for example, for me, since I help people with, with basically lead gen, my question is what part of sales and prospecting do you find most challenging? Right. Now, here's the beautiful thing. If they don't give me an answer I like, that's okay. I just had a guy on, his answer was none. Right. What that tells me is you are not a potential prospect. You still might be a joint venture partner or referral partner, but you're not a potential prospect. That's okay. Right. When you're doing as many of these as, you, as me and my clients are, doesn't matter. I, I love yeah. it. So the strategy there is, well, I can see it's twofold. Number one, for the listeners, they always know that you're going to be talking about lead gen, so they associate Bob with lead generation. Yep. But I like that you're doing the other one, that you're – you're already trying to work out which of these threes this person is that I'm interviewing. So that is answering that question there for you. There you go. Yes, that, that, that helps there, okay? Interesting. Question number four is now the mine is because I play, a, I, I play a character on mine because I'm very extroverted. So I play William Shatner on cocaine. Like that's kind of the personality that I have. Right, okay. So that's all freaking out right now because I'm very chilled right now. When right. During the podcast, I'm talking like this the entire time. You are actually Bob's full on totally full on during that sort of eight minutes of the interview like it's whoa okay so yeah that's yeah yeah. so for example if you are um what is it if you're trying to get other business owners on finance yeah you would say what other small business owners like yourself do you think would be great for my podcast yes so question number four is always asking about leads interesting thing here this is also another qualifier or disqualifier if your potential referral partner joint venture partner or venture or you know, joint, joint venture referral partner, mm. because here's the thing. If you don't know other business owners like you statistically, and I'm not saying this happens every single time, they're more likely to not be really doing well in their business. Like Janet, you sent me a bunch of names. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, interestingly, I said to Bob, well, okay, I've got some brilliant people who I know will give good value and they're my VIP clients. So I'm going to make sure that they give a great interview for you. So I'm going to coach them beforehand on how Perfect. to be a great guest for Bob because yep. that was a great way to be able to give them the experience of being a podcast guest. Right. So, so now we got, we got the first four questions, which should be about 30 seconds apiece. Yep. Question Excellent. number five is where they give value. Great. So the idea being here is you basically ask them, look, I'm looking for three to five minutes of business advice based on whatever niche you're in there. And about three to five minutes. And for me, I ask that people don't sell during that time. Yeah. Because I don't want it to be, I've had people on that says, well, this is why you should hire me. Right. And it's all about giving educational value here. Kind of like what we're doing right now, that part there. So yeah. three to five minutes. Then question number six is a question designed to make them laugh. Love so, it. Because the idea is it's eight minutes. You want them to have a good experience with you. Yeah. So mine is I switch them out every single time. And so for yours, because you like, you like the, um, what, what are those called again? Sanity These circles? These are my sanity circles, my paintings. Yeah, sanity circles. So your question was, again, I'm going to say this. You can bleep this out if you want to. Janet, what the fuck is a sanity circle? Yeah. Which made you laugh. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I really liked that idea because um, number one is you've, you've actually included two questions there that are designed to make the, the guest feel like they're really special and interesting, which of course, right. they, I mean, everybody is special and interesting in their own way. You've just got to find a quick way to be able to do that. So people leave that podcast feeling really good about themselves, that they did a great job, even if the important part of teaching may be something that they 
didn't do as well because they may have not have been condensed enough. But I really love that idea that you've actually topped and tailed with something that makes that speaker feel really good about having been here, which brings us idea. back to your whole thing that these speakers are either a customer, a, a referral partner or a joint venture partner. Potential, potential, potential. of those three there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I just had a company on, uh, they do, um, basically they do a male homeowner replacement. And I was like, I don't think, again, I'm thinking in my mind, are you potential cause yo client potential referral partner, joint venture partner? Probably not. What do they do? Yeah. Male home. What is basically it? TRT. You're old and you need, you're old, old and you need testosterone. Oh, okay. So in here in Australia, that would be called meals on wheels where it's where you get food delivered. No, this is basically like basically you're um it's you're injecting hormones into your body. Oh, I get it, I get it. Oh, there you go. Yes. Okay, totally. So yeah. again, I told me says, well, since I'm focusing on the B two B area, I don't know if you would be a good guess. Instead of me saying right. flat out no, just you know that part you know there, because again, I wasn't sure if they'd be one of those three people. Yeah. Okay. And you know that's also fair for your listeners because yes, they're listening because they want to get business ideas. And for the podcast guests, they're there because they want to get their message in front of potential. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So that's a really nice filter as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, yeah, that, that's the strategy right there in a nutshell of how to do it. Yeah, that is brilliant. And the thing that I quite like about the way that you've done that with that question of, you know, who are some other brilliant people who would be great guests? I mean, I've never heard anybody ask that on any kind of podcast. It's an unusual question to have. Um, but you're, you're being really upfront with people that my intention is to make this get, you know, I want more guest um, people. Right. Well, now, also the idea is that from other people is now they get to shout out people who had a great impact on their life. Right. And then also it makes my follow up very easy. Hi, Fred. Janet told me to reach out to you. Why? Right. Because she wants because she was on my podcast and you should be too. Excellent. So I'm just thinking for people who are listening here, if they're wanting to do a similar strategy, and of course, they're going to be modifying the questions so that they're going to be, you know, suiting them, is another way instead of, you know, you could be modifying that question instead of saying who else would be a great guest, it could be who's had a great impact on you that you think would be a brilliant guest. Like, you know, yeah, however you want, however you want to yeah. do it on there. Again, it, that question number four for every single one of my clients is completely different. Right. So it's all about your style and making sure there, because I'm going to tell you guys the three things that every single podcast needs. And these are the three non-negotiables. Okay. Actually, two are non-negotiables. Number one, you need to enjoy doing the podcast. Yes. Because if you're going to, do, if you're not going to enjoy it, the amount of work that's involved, you're going to hate life and yeah. you're going to stop doing it. And Which is why I get 99% you'll probably not be very good at what you do anyway. Like, right. And it's why 99% of podcasts don't get over a hundred episodes and I'm already at 400. Yeah. So number two, your guest needs to enjoy it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Well, so those are really the two non-negotiables. I personally think a podcast needs to have a question where basically is a, a lead gen type question where you're asking a person about it there. Right. Okay. Right. And yeah. so really, Janet, the big difference between our styles, and again, first off, both our styles are great. Yeah. My experience with yours is yours is, a, is um, a more of like the funnel. It's more of a branding piece. Right. Yeah. Okay? Now, that's not bad because here's yeah. the thing. You built yours as a branding piece. You're eventually going to get networking. You're eventually going to get leads out of it there. You know, that, that part there. But the idea is this is a tool designed to get your name out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is designed as a networking piece. I'm eventually going to get branding. I'm eventually going to get viewers. I'm eventually going to get you know, all that stuff there. But mine's all about getting in front of people very easy. And I tell people this, it's all about starting conversations faster, building relationships faster, getting referrals faster, and finally obtaining clients faster. Yeah. That's an interesting thing because I would say, um, so if we now look at the other style, so there's definitely be some ping, ping, ping. So we've got some, you know, some good bells. We've got, um, we, we actually right. need like some kind of number happening over here for, um, you know, the, the shorter, the shorter technique. Now the thing that goes with, I call net casting, by the way, I call it net casting. Net casting. It's all about networking. Okay. Oh, I like it. Coin a word. It's a net casting. That's good. Yeah. So it's all about that networking. And I love that you're, 
really, I love your, your idea, you know, of that, that people fit into those three criteria. Now, when, when we had our conversation, we worked out, well, no, I wasn't going to be a client because, you know, I've got this great stuff now. Um, but then we looked at referral. Well, okay, I, was re I had some great clients who would be brilliant guests. So that was a referral. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, whatever happens in your relationship with them is between you guys. Now, right. then the other one, though, was joint venture. And that was where you were saying, all right, we've actually got this new program that we're going to be launching and we're just taking, you know, inviting some of the people who we've had as guests to be able to contribute. So for me, it was an easy thing to do. Um, and so, yeah, I went, okay, I'm certainly in that. So you were able to very, very quickly to be able to walk through after our conversation. Um, and then the whole, because if there was a quick podcast, it was very easy to have the quick conversation afterwards. Like it didn't feel incongruous. I didn't feel rushed um, to right. very quickly move it over to, okay, there's a joint venture happening. Let's make this happen. And so I really quite liked that that outcome happened quite quickly there. Now, interestingly, from the other side, so if you have a look at the podcast where you go into more depth. Now, um, the reason why I, I used to always have a podcast that was just me. And right. I ran that for over four years, every single week. And it worked exceptionally well for me to build trust and connect with my clients. But I, I changed that when I moved over to, I did a whole new rebranding. And the reason I moved over to these more in-depth interviews is I thought, you know what? I just want to lift the game on how much value can I give people through free content? So, and also I really, really love doing interviews. I started my first business. It was all interviews for years before podcasts existed. And I really, really missed it. Now, so if in terms of when you were saying that it became very much a, a branding podcast, absolutely, because I always talk around, you know, building tribes, the things that have got to do with the business. So it's very much around that content. But it's also very much around, okay, how much can I lift that game so this becomes industry standard? So that was right. for me, was my personal goal. Now, the next part when you're talking about are people um, going to be, when you come on your podcast, are they leads? Are they referrals? Are they um, JVs? With leads, actually, interestingly, some of them do become clients of mine. Um, and again, so again, what I'm talking about, Janet, there is it's basically kind of like the, it's a sales funnel. You have this focus on education and branding on your your podcast there. So yeah. you're eventually going to get leads. You're eventually going to build a network out of it there. Yeah. I'm able to build a network faster because I do short episodes and do more of them. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the thing when you're thinking about, okay, what is the outcome? Why am I doing this? So for this one, you're very, very clear that this is, let's get through this quickly because this is my outcome and I love that focus. Right. So if you have a look at this one here, we still, the referrals and the joint ventures all happen. These become right. people who you have a long-term relationship with and they're the joint venture partners that help you to grow your business. So you can't do that in any other way than having these conversations, really. So um, that. That works exceptionally well. I really love the idea. So it really comes down to, are you wanting to, when people are making a decision about which is the way that I want to go, is I love Bob's technique, but the thing that you've got to be good at is you've got to be very good at keeping, um, you've got to be very good at briefing your guests beforehand so everything runs fast. And I tell you what, I love the idea because people's attention span as listeners is super short. So right. that's an, another huge attraction to what you do. I absolutely love that. So for a lot of people, I think this is a technique that can work exceptionally well for you. If you're looking at, I want to dive in deeper because you're wanting to have that positioning of, you know, being, I guess, the, the content creating leader, then you go for longer. Um, but I totally agree. If, you're, if, you're, if you care more about the content creation side, then I would definitely go for the longer form podcast on there. Yeah. And so it comes down to when you decide you're doing a podcast, what is your goal? I, okay. can I, get, oh, I have a story about this, a conversation I just had with a lady. Can I tell it? Yeah, please do. Go ahead, Bob. So she, she comes to me and tells me that she's broke AF, so she can't hire me, but she'd like some free help. I'm like, sure, that works there. So she's doing, do you know what Kagan water is? Ionized, wa ionized water? I ionized water. Oh, I, yeah, I I've heard of Iron Dice Water. I'm sure lots okay, of people so, are listening to it as well. Yeah, so she's basically, she's involved with with Kate right now. 
And so she wanted to do a podcast. And so she said her podcast was she's going to get all these people talk about how great cake and water is. So people will listen and want to get cake and water. So I'm like, well, here's my, here's my problem though. So in other words, you're going to build a podcast. Basically it's a cake and water circle jerk, which I'm not against, but you're saying that me as a non kagan user is going to listen, is going to want to listen to a podcast where people talk about how great it is. No. Boring. And she's like, yeah, she's like, no, you're not. I'm like, so you need to have a, a specific plan. I was talking to another guy who wanted me on his podcast said, well, what's your goal? I just want to educate people. And he had no, he had no plan for monetization of anything. I'm like, well, I'm not going to be on that until you actually have a serious plan. Because yeah. if your only goal is just education and that's it, there's no funnel everywhere there. Cause Jen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to expose your secret right now. Oh. <laughs> you eventually want people listening to this podcast to buy some of your courses. Oh, of course. Absolutely. And I, 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 I let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. I let yeah. the cat out of the bag. Absolutely. And that is, that is, and because this podcast is number one, it's to keep people engaged and I get right. feedback all the time that because of the value I get that there's, that my emails keep on getting open. So that's an important part. It keeps my emails getting open, keeps on people interacting. But one of the reasons why I go into, why I've chosen to do the more in depth is because from this podcast, sure, I'd love people to be investing in my lower price programs. But for me, this is attracting the higher end client. This right. is attracting the people, the person that wants to work with me closely and get Janet every single day and get me one-on-one -on -one consulting with them. Right. That's and also, what this podcast is designed for and it works that well. Right. And just as, just as I designed mine towards networking, I also get leads for people off my podcast who want to work with me on building a podcast. Yeah. Brilliant. So what, again, what it comes down to is, again, I look at podcasts as a sales funnel. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say I, I'm a, I, I have a fruit cart. If I were going to online, I would focus on a funnel that sells apples. Right. Eventually oranges are going to get sold. Yeah. If I focus on a sales funnel that sells oranges, eventually apples are going to get sold. Love it. So it's, it's all about what is your number one priority when doing a podcast? Is your number one priority to get in front of people and network with them? Then my style is better there because I do far more of these than you do. So I can build a quick, I can, if we do, if we go purely off the podcast, yeah. my network gets built faster than yours. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a brilliant way of looking at it. And I think a really important thing here that you've just explained really well, Bob, is You've always got to start with the end in mind. Like I all actually, actually the last the podcast that I've just done, or well actually it'll be a few weeks from when we published this, was all around the reverse success strategy. You've always got to start at the end. Like what is it that you're wanting people to buy? And right. so how do you want them to buy it? So with yours, you you get them to buy through those conversations. So that's great. So if they're gonna have through the conversations, how do we get more of those conversations? is a really important part. If the way that you get them to buy may not be through those, it may be through through your sales pages or booking in a, you know, a consultation where they have to have some kind of, you know, this is what I want to achieve, then you might you might go back another step and work out is this going to work. So right. that strategy is a really important part. And so I have an opinion oh, about sales consults actually. Yeah, go for it. Okay. I say no longer do sales consults, only do podcasts. Right. Because here's, yeah, because the strategy is, again, question there, I asked someone during the podcast, what part of sales and prospecting do you find most challenging? Based off that answer, I, I have a, an idea if they're a potential client, referral partner, or joint venture partner, based, you know, everything there. Excellent. You do a sale, you do a sales consult and it's, you know, basically Brokey McBroke who, who decides to do a sales consult with you because they just want the free stuff. Yeah. You just lost 30 minutes. You have no, you don't get anything out of this. Yeah. If by chance Brokey McBroke gets on my podcast, who isn't going to give me a single penny, I still have content that they're going to share. Yeah, that's a good point. So so I, I don't consider it. I don't consider it a loss. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you with this whole idea of the free consults that then leads onto a sales. That's why with ours, it's always very upfront. You know, you want to meet these criteria before you even get on the phone. Um, the thing that I want to check with you, Bob, on this is because you're asking them that question that is very specific to what you're offering, what you can do to help them, it, would you, do you think this technique would work for people who are not in the business-to-business -business, um, um, Real estate works uh, will work great with real estate. 
You would ask Macy, you, yeah, it would, we had real estate agents that are working with there. They, tar, they tailor their question a little more about, you know, what's the best thing about you know, owning a home or renting? We basically, you build a question that's along the lines of getting people to think about your services. Right. So okay. a financial planner that we're working with here, she's asking uh, you know, a couple questions about, you know, money stuff. Right. What, what, are your plan, what are your plans to do when you retire? Excellent. Okay. And so with those people, then when, when you're asking them to share something, are they still business people? Oh, basically it just comes down to whoever you decide you want on your target market. So for, if you're going to go, if you're non, if you're in the like non B2B space, yeah. you're probably more localized. You're like a local market there. If you're basically, if you're doing it for a non B2B thing, I mean, I'd have to think about it and kind of figure out what, again, I'd figure out what are you selling? What's the end goal? And it, there's a lot of different figures involved on that part there. So yeah. my answer is depends. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's, I, I love that idea because I'm just thinking about a typical client that I may have, which may be somebody who is a coach that may work in some kind of life coaching, personal development, those sorts of things that you can actually make it really easy where people are going to be sharing from their own experience, you know, three things right. that, you can share that, that, that you can be sharing with people that means that you live a life of, of doing what, what is joy or Nikki Bruno is actually one of my clients who's a life coach and she's killing it. Right. Excellent. And her, her all focus is she, she coaches with women who are dealing with, who dealt with caca and are going through all that stuff there. Right. I can say this on your podcast. I can say crap, but you know, she says, caca. Right, you know, I'm just thinking your language. I'm going, caca, is this another type of mineral water? So <laughs> no, it, 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 it's, yeah, there we go. It, it's yeah, it's crap there. Right. And okay. so did hers. And so now she focuses basically on fe you know, you know, females who have gone through the other end. Uh, she just got one of the survivors of the Boston Marathon bombing. Oh, right. Okay. You know, that part on there. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, oh, I love yeah. that idea. I'm pleased that we had that discussion because I know that there will be a lot of people here going, well, I'm not in the business to business, but I still am international because I can offer online and I can do all of my consulting through Zoom, for example. It, it, yeah. Again, yeah. if it's a consulting, if it's any type of consulting, yes, it can. You just got to figure out who are your target clients. Yep. Because that's the first thing I ask them if you want to work with me, who are your target clients? Because if you don't know, I can't help you. Because yeah. I, I say this here, do you remember the, the movie Incredibles? Yeah, yeah. So remember with Syndrome the Villain when he says, when everyone is super, no one will be? Yes. So when everyone is your, is your potential client, no one is. Yeah, I love it. I love that you could actually give that lesson there referring to, to um, the Incredibles. So that's, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. So I love it. So just in summary for everybody, we've got here, we've talked about two different types of podcasting. We've talked about pods, um, Bob's, um, you know, technique of like six questions, always the same, eight to 10 minutes and let, always less than 10 minutes. So you can put it onto LinkedIn and right. that it is very much about getting as many of these done because people are either going to be a lead, a referral partner or a joint venture partner that's the perfect place to be able to use that. And I must say, for me, now the opposite one we've got, which is the longer, more in-depth podcast, for me, that this might be a technique that works for everybody else if you want to dive in deep. One of the reasons I do this is because I love having these deep conversations. So that's, right. for me, a very selfish thing. Like, I love it. So and again, it's all, if you enjoy it, that's a very important part of it. Absolutely, absolutely, because that's what I want to do. Um, and also, it's very much around, you know, Stepping up as the leader is, you know, man, raising the bar. This is the kind of stuff you can get even for free. But it right. is, it takes longer to do mm -hmm. that. Now, um, I'm not saying it's any more complicated, but it just takes longer to do that. Well, also, the other thing is a lot of people who do long form podcasts have to do video editing or audio editing. Yes. My system is designed no editing. When no I am editing. done here, every single time I'm done with an episode, five minutes to post it on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, I love that. That is actually a really good point. We, I actually don't do any editing. I just figure people honestly just sweat that stuff too much, but absolutely. Um, so there's those two sides to think about it, but you know, what's an interesting thing, Bob, because I recognize that even though I may spend half an hour where we're going to give really, really good content, I know that there are going to be a lot of people that will never listen, but they will look at the transcript or they will look at the, even the topic and it's all, and it's getting them so that they're thinking. So for that reason, I still do a, a, a three minute, three to five minute video podcast every single week that is just designed for those people that want the quick hits. So the quick, the short ones work. 
they really, really work. They do. So, um, so for now, for people who are listening, what would be one action step that they can take this week that's going to help them to be able to implement some of the things we've talked about today? I think if you're going to implement a podcast there, first thing you got to think about is what is my end goal with the yeah. podcast? What do I want from it there? And make sure it's a money generating idea. Yeah. Love I just want to be known. Who cares that does it being known? Does it automatically make you money? No. You have that part there. Have a goal in mind on what you want your podcast to be at that part there. And then basically start asking people to be interviewed. You'd be surprised at how many times very first person I ever got on an interview Literally, I just registered the, the, the domain 20 minutes, uh, you know, 20 minutes beforehand. Love I said, that. hey, you want to be on my podcast? He's like, well, what's your website? I'm like, I just bought it 20 minutes ago, but it's 808podcast.com. Well, how many listeners do you have? I'm like, you're literally the first person I have ever asked to be on a podcast. All right. And then we got, you got connected there. He became a client of ours bought one of my high-end packages. I love it. And you know what there is, that is like a really good lesson for people who are listening here is you do not have to have everything perfect before you start. This just right. move fast, make it happen. See where it goes. Just, okay, I say this here every single time, just get the damn thing done. Yeah. Perfect. And that is a great, great message for us to end on Bob. So yeah. for people who'd like to find out more about you, people who may be interested in being a guest, um, people who may be interested in you helping them to set something up like this, where should they go? I think uh, the two places, if you go to 808podcast.com, yep. that's where I, you know, I have my, you can opt into my email list, see that I'm on iTunes, you know, Facebook, YouTube, all that part there. Or if you're interested in working with me directly or you'll meet my team, uh, just send an email to 808 at 808podcast.com. Excellent. That sounds perfect. And we'll put all of those in the show notes as well for everybody so you can get those. And I'll actually find a link to the interview that you and I did together, Bob, so people can just see what one looks like. So they've got an idea. Perfect. Yeah, that, that, we'll that works. That sure. If you want, I'll, I'll send you the um, MP, MP4 if you need it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. We can make that happen. Perfect. Make that happen. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you everybody for being here. One of the best things that you can do for Bob and I is to just share with us any action you take, because as you can see, we've mentioned action quite a few times today. So that's what we're hoping that you will do. So either come over, drop us an email, come over to social media, go and talk to Bob over at his 808podcast.com and let us know what action you've taken. That is the best feedback that you can give us and if you're watching this on itunes i'd be incredibly grateful if you would take the time to leave a um a star review um whatever it is that feels right for you so and it could be specifically about this podcast episode or about any of them that would be a great way for other people to be able to help find us okay thanks so much for your time bob and goodbye everybody